I'm Joshua Bardwell, and today you're going to learn something. Today, you're going to learn how to build a quadcopter with the Race Flight Revolt. This is the Race Flight flight controller, the only one that is made by the Race Flight team specifically to run Race Flight. It has all the fancy yada, 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 32 kilohertz gyro. Oh, so good. We're going to find out just how good it is. We've got these 2206 2800 kV motors from Easy Drone, and I'll tell you why I got interested in these. Uh, I fly 2600 kV motors with 5x4x3 props. That's my favorite setup. Uh, and I've always thought, well, if 2600 kV is good, then maybe even higher kV is better. But the problem is that you used to give up a lot of torque when you went to higher kV motors. But modern motors with arc magnets and N52 and N58, and look at that arc gap. Oh, it's a tiny arc gap. and etc. Modern magnets make so much more power and torque than they used to. What if now we could go to 2800 kV and get the advantages of higher kV, but without giving up the, the lack of torque? Well, we're going to find out with this build. The ESC is going to be this Acon 4-in-1 ESC. Uh, this is a 30 amp ESC. It's a brand new from Acon, BLL S, D shot, all the good stuff. And when I pulled this out of the bag, the first thing I thought was, ooh, rows of capacitors. I don't know why, but something about seeing all these capacitors stacked up in a row made me think, oh, this is probably a good ESC, sure. Um, I'll tell you what I like about this. A lot of 4 in 1 ESCs, they don't get the motor order right. So motor one, two, three, four coming out of these these uh, pads does not correctly match the motor order for clean flight or beta flight. Acon has done this one right. Motor number one is here, two is here, three is here, and four is here. Unfortunately, this is a race flight build, and race flight changes the motor order, so I might have to do some reordering uh, of my signal wires, but we'll see how that pans out. Everything else looks really good on this ESC. We've got the main big connectors for the main battery leads, an aux connector here for VBAT. Uh, we've got two separate 12 volt outputs. Very nice. You get that if you need it. And if you do want 5 volt, well, oh, there's a tiny pad here. I guess they're hoping that whatever you're running will take VBAT or 12 volts. Oh, of course. Uh, 5 volt, obviously, 5 volt comes out here. Sure. 5 volt comes out on this connector here. Yeah, that's where you get 5 volt for your flight controller from. The. Now here's something that I just now noticed. I'm super happy to see this is an inductor. This gray thing here is an electrical component called an inductor. And what that means is that we almost certainly have a switching regulator. And that is really nice because switching regulators can handle a lot more current without generating heat. Basically, you get a switching regulator, you got a much smaller, lighter package that can handle a lot more current draw. And it probably means that we actually, I'm guessing that the switching regulator is the 12 volt regulator and that the five volt regulator, if we just look over near this five volt pad on the back, I'm guessing that's gonna be this component, kind of looks like a regulator to me, these three legs. So I'm guessing this is a linear five volt regulator here, uh, just with a low current output for your flight controller basically, and that this means we have a switching 12 volt regulator, which is just fantastic if so. Uh, I could check the specs on this if I were a responsible reviewer, but why would I do that? The frame for this build is going to be the Zoom Pod from uh, from Shendrones. Uh, Andy Shen sent me this some time back after I ordered. He just dumped it in. It's good to be a YouTuber, isn't it? And I was super impressed with this. I even made a video about it talking about why I thought it was awesome. And you can just watch that video in the upper right if you care to. And the frame is, so this is the Zoom Pod, and it actually goes on basically any of these frames with a base plate and standoffs. It basically just sits down on top of the standoff. So you can put this on a Mixuco, you can put it on a uh, many different uh, frames, that base plates that come from Shenron. I don't actually know which one this is. At the end of the day, it's a base plate cut out of carbon. You just take your pick which one you like. Now, when it comes to the OSD, we have a problem. Now, you know me. I'm not going to fly a copter without an OSD if I can possibly help it. And my first thought was that I would use the Red Rotor RROSD V2, which is out. It's uh, I've used the V1 for a long time, and so why not put the V2 on this one? But the problem is that this pad layout does not work well with a 4-in-1 ESC. Let me show you what I mean. In order for the current sensor on the RROSD to work correctly, current has to flow through this shunt resistor. This big resistor here, when you see that, that is part of the current sensor. And what this does is, as the current flows through the circuit, it takes just a little bit of that current, a tiny fraction of that current, and it just shuttles it to the side into the current sensor. 
and the current sensor then just scales that up. So if we were to take, you know, one one hundredth of the current and shuttle it over into the current sensor, the current sensor would just measure what it saw and multiply by 100, and that would be your current readout. The problem is that in order to make that work, you have to have the current coming in on the main pads here and going out on the ESC pads. Now with the Red Rotor RROSD V1, there was one big ground pad and one big positive pad over on the side of the board, and people hated that. They really wanted separate pads on the corners so you could wire your ESC straight to the corners instead of wiring them all to one side of the board. And sure, that makes a lot of sense, but in a case like this, it actually works against us. Because what we would need to do is we would need to wire the main battery discharge lead here so the current comes in here flows through the shunt resistor to the ESC pads, and then we would need to wire one of the ESC pads over to the input on the 4-in-1 ESD. That way current flows through here and then over to the ESC. Whenever the ESC draws current, the current sensor reads that current. And here's why that's a problem. These little pads are not sized to carry the current for all four ESCs. Now I'll bet you that these pads actually could take it. I'll bet you they're fine. But the problem is that the wire itself is not going to be big enough. I would want a minimum of 14 gauge wire, and I usually use 14 gauge. But 12 gauge would be even better. 12 gauge is really a hassle to work with, though. And I usually don't find that my copters draw enough current to really demand 12 gauge. So I usually go with 14 gauge. Now, typically for ESCs, you'll be running 18 gauge. And I think you're going to have a hard time getting a 14 gauge wire to fit on this little pad. So what can you do? Well, certainly one thing you could do is you could take one wire from here to there and then pick a second pad of your choice and wire from here to there. What a mess that would be. You don't want to do that. So I really don't think that uh, PDBs with the ESC pads at the corners work very well with 4-in-1 ESCs unless you make the pads big enough that you can fit a 14-gauge wire on one of the ESC pads. So you can wire from here through to the ESC pad from the ESC over to the 4-in-1 ESC. On the other hand, I just pulled out a 12-gauge battery lead. Just, I was like, well, maybe I'm wrong, and I don't know, maybe, oh, that could work. If a 12-gauge battery lead would fit here, maybe it would work. Maybe we could wire it from here to there. Maybe, that's just, it looks like 12 would work, and 14 would certainly work. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe we'll go with this after all. And that brings us to the final component of our build, the video transmitter. Now, this video transmitter that I'm holding is not for sale yet. It's in development, but I've got the approval to show it to you guys. This is from UBAD, uh, the guys who make LaForge and many other things. And the thing about this video transmitter is that it has a built-in OSD. Now, that OSD shows you video-related stuff like your channel and your transmit power, but it also shows you your timer, your call sign, and your battery voltage. One critical thing, for me at least, that this is missing is it does not do current reading, but I can live without that if it means that I get an OSD without having to put another board in my stack. If I end up deciding that I can make the ROSD work, then I'm going to use a regular, I don't need two OSDs, right? So then I'm going to use a regular uh, video transmitter, just like a TS-5823 or something like that. And now it is time to begin the build.